Okay, so let's talk about this art piece that I did for Nicole Springbok on YouTube. People were kind enough to submit when watching her videos, how they would feel, uh, things they thought she enjoyed. Um, so there were some common themes, um, such as her love for video games and fall and people really enjoyed such things as stormy nights, uh, that kind of sound of wind in her videos. Using their ideas and mine in combination, I began to sketch out some of the areas of the art piece. I was using Art Nouveau inspired style and that allowed me to create these sort of uh, modules, if you will, to fill in with some different um, ideas that everyone had come up with. So on the top left we have her cats playing, um, which I would later flush out. Um, she had some lovely video of them, which was very helpful. I chose not to color them as dark gray as they actually are, just because I wanted their details to still stand out in the piece. So the color, although uh, is a bit darker, in real life I decided to go with a bit of a lighter gray. In the right hand top circular piece, in the right hand corner, it was inspired by her love of coffee. As well as I noticed in one of her videos, she had illustrations of herself as a springbok, which I thought were adorable with their different themed emotions and expressions. So I took the outfit that she was dressed in for those illustrations uh, and colored it in with each of the colors that she had used for the backgrounds for each of those illustrations. And surrounding both of the uh, both of those circular modules is a bit of um, I guess you could say lattice work, which would be kind of like made of bronze. I, I kind of supposed <laughs> in the sketch there wasn't that. That was something that I kind of filled in after seeing the sketch full and how it kind of came together. I wanted uh, to add a bit more uh, depth and layering, so that one came about kind of. Uh, in the final version. People suggested for flowers that they would like to see hydrangeas. They thought of uh, a bouquet of roses. Uh, they thought of orchids and daisies. Uh, I agreed with all these choices. I thought they would uh, be lovely and I was uh, <laughs> I actually uh, realized too too late for time wise anyway that uh, I probably didn't need to sketch every single flower and petal and then ink every single flower and petal and then color every single flower and petal. I later just moved to, after doing the uh, hydrangeas and the roses, I decided with the daisies and the orchids to instead uh, pencil them <laughs> and uh, very loosely uh, just to get the shape of where they would all sit and then I just went in I just had to trust myself that they were gonna turn out okay inking because otherwise all those all those little petals get to be a lot. Then um, people uh, submitted her favorite um, authors. So in the bottom left we have Emil Zola. Uh, he was quite fun to draw because it was a black and white photo obviously and I chose to keep that uh, grayscale and I realized how much fun it is to draw people old photos in grayscale. There's just some strange depth that is uh, brought out that I just... Like, I like sketching him actually at every point um, of this process, but like that final coloring just... I don't know. I think it was very fun to do and hopefully it turned out as good as I, I felt about it. Um, the next one up is a fall breeze. Uh, hopefully that comes across. Uh, it's supposed to look kind of sparkly and shimmery like those uh, fall winds seem to be. Um, those, those warm uh, fall breezes with some maple leaves because, you know, up here in Canada that's our most typical leaf that we see. Uh, so of course it had to be some maple leaves. Um, above that is the Final Fantasy VI character Terra. Nicole mentioned in her videos that Final Fantasy VI was a very special uh, Final Fantasy and game uh, for her. So I was pleased to get to illustrate uh, 
Tara, she's a little bit tricky with her hair, uh, not just drawing it, uh, which is, I tried to get very precise, um, as well as uh, the color. Um, I kept going between if I should do the kind of blonde uh, color of the original illustrations or the kind of aquamarine, minty, green uh, combination uh, of the game. At that point, I should I should go for the brighter color. I just thought that that would look um, a little bit more interesting. Above that is a suggestion uh, somebody made of a unicorn. And also I knew that uh, she really liked horror and was particularly fond of the Left 4 Dead series, um, particularly like the Left 4 Dead uh, fourth game. So uh, I wasn't sure how I was going to incorporate horror into this without making it uh, horrifying, maybe. Um, so it just popped in my head to have the unicorn spearing that hand from the cover and just blood just going all over the place. So uh, hopefully that doesn't distract uh, people initially when they see it. Uh, next is the author James Joyce. Again, he was very fun to draw because of the grayscale. Uh, following along next to him is two paragon symbols. Um, there was an idea in the sketch to do, um, I was going to do a Narnian N uh, that uh, kind of had the lamppost as part of it, but when I uh, drew these um, kind of uh, brown gray uh, circles to kind of frame each one, I realized that they had gotten, uh, everything had gotten quite crammed for those top two. So uh, putting something that detailed in it, I was worried would just get lost but behind the antlers. So I decided that the paragon symbols were simple enough that they would hopefully still come across. Next to that, uh, classically uh, Alfred Hitchcock's uh, silhouette. Um, that was fun to do as well. Um, Next to that is a little fox face <laughs> yawning. Um, the trick with this one was uh, keeping it cute and not over rendering. I ran into the problem of trying to make the fox look so realistic um, that I probably made it a little bit less cute <laughs> in my attempt to get every little fur in the right place. Uh, it was one of the earlier ones I had drawn. So I tried to remedy that in some of the other parts of the illustration and keep it um, a little bit more uh, simplistic. Um, people did make lots of really good suggestions for animals, like the unicorn, and they said like fluffy kittens, fluffy kittens! <laughs> so uh, having her cats in I thought would work for that. Next below the fox is of course Aerith from Final Fantasy VII. It was nice having, uh, because of the movies, or they have that really lovely 3D uh, animated uh, versions of her, so it, it uh, made drawing her uh, much easier versus kind of the more flat images um, that you find for Final Fantasy VI. So I was pretty pleased with how she came out, kind of debating over the background choice for behind her. Uh, originally it was going to be pink, but when I was doing research on her eye color, it was said um, by her character designer that um, they chose green because it uh, reminded them of the earth. Um, and she, if you've played the games, uh, is kind of sort of the spirit of the planet or something something along those lines. <laughs> I'm, not sure, I'm not sure anyone's totally figured all that out, but uh, uh, ended up going with the green background, hoping it would also kind of match the cat's green background. Um, and kind of create some interest for the eye of kind of going back and forth between the the connecting colors. Uh, the next one down is um, a stormy night with blowing wind. And I know this kind of ends up looking like a bunch of swirling water, but it, I promise you it's supposed to be rain, swirling, and clouds. Really. <laughs> uh, I could have gone more dark and intense with this, but for some reason I am I felt like at this point with the softer colors that kind of softened the, the harshness of the storm perhaps and, and made it more of a pleasant thing. Uh, so I end up going with the, the softer colors. Below that is uh, possibly my most 
what I think was the most inspired part, uh, which is her favorite uh, member of Joy Division, uh, the uh, lead vocalist and guitarist, as uh, portrait done in the uh, waves, the, the, the wave band uh, illustration that is on their cover of their al- one of their albums. So hopefully that comes across. I know it's not strictly uh, super detailed, so hopefully, um, especially after you're kind of made aware, you can kind of see the, the face in there and kind of know who it is now. And then along the bottom, connecting these kind of rows of, uh, this, this big row of circular modules with all the illustrations in them, is the words, the world ends with you. Now, this was kind of a special thing for me uh, in one of her videos, where she's talking about uh, poetry, and at the end she quotes the uh, title and famous line of the game, The World Ends With You, which I adored this game, and I still do. Uh, It's a fantastically clever and creative uh, game to play. It also seemed to leave something with you at the end. I really uh, felt impacted by the story that was crafted over many, many, many hours of of gameplay. So I really felt like it belonged uh, in an illustration with uh, Final Fantasy VI and VII, which are two very, um, very important creations. And I I felt like the world ends with you and maybe not as well known, but I think is equally as creative and endeavor. <laughs> so just uh, between those words uh, and and the, the kind of circular shape that we have going on is a portrait of Nicole herself. Um, surrounding her are uh, what should look like uh, butterflies that are books and they're kind of flopping and flying um, because of how much she enjoys books. I just Maybe I've seen this somewhere else at some point and just came to my mind, but it just made all the sense in the world to turn them into these uh, bird, butterfly-like, uh, you know, those enchanted stories uh, that have just taken flight. And so I chose the hydrangeas to go around her. Uh, you probably have classically seen uh, the kind of use of flowers to uh, kind of frame the face. So I chose the hydrangeas because I thought that they were uh, so detailed um, and uh, just so uh, elegant and beautiful. Um, I know I have many, many hydrangeas in the yard, so uh, I'm very used to how they looked. So I think they they came across looking like that, I think. Um, The leaves on them were really fun to draw. I always love drawing leaves for some reason. Probably just how details you can get with the highlights, especially hydrangea leaves, which are quite shiny. So for Nicole herself, her hair was inspired by a video where she did a uh, kind of tapping and, and pressing of a package of hair rollers, which was a fantastic video. Uh, but something I remember her saying while falling asleep to it uh, was that she loved her hair in that video and she said she often didn't like the way her hair turned out um so even though i used different pictures uh, for the outfit and for the face uh, that video in particular was the one i used for the hair so i can only hope that i captured how fantastic her hair looked in that video and for the outfit i chose a kind of blue dress that she was wearing it's not as dark as I ended up uh, making it in my fin- final illustration, but I just loved uh, when I saw the video, the shoulders. They're kind of this pinched fabric, pinched and folded. Um, and I just thought it was an amazing texture and uh, design that I just had to use it. I ended up figuring out um, uh, much too late, unfortunately, that I had uh, one of my copics I had not marked on my sheet. Um, which, you know, I refer to when I'm thinking about what color to use. Um, and then searching through, uh, my markers. So, um, there was one blue that would have actually matched the actual dress she was wearing much better. And I, uh, didn't have it marked on my sheet for some reasons. I found out later. I was like, oh no. 
but I still think uh, that that bright blue is uh, quite lovely. It brings a lot of color um, to the final piece, so hopefully that worked out for the best. <laughs> For Nicole's makeup, I tried to keep it really simple. She changes her makeup over the seasons, which is lovely to see. So I went with, um, it, it was a bit of a hard choice picking which one to go with. They're all very lovely. Uh, but for ease of illustration um, and not kind of muddying it up too much, I ended up, instead of going with a smokier eye, I went with just a very simplistic eyeliner, um, uh, blush, and a soft, uh, kind of earth tone uh, lip. So uh, hopefully that blush comes across. <laughs> and it, uh, I tried to make it quite soft. I didn't want it to be um, harsh at all. So just using very, very light pinks. So uh, hopefully the hair color itself turned out well. Um, I was really worried that it was getting too dark. <laughs> I was going in too dark at a certain point. Uh, the left side, I wanted to be brighter, more like the right side, but is when you work in these types of uh, situations, it's it's permanent. Once that ink is down, it's down. So um, hopefully it still <laughs> all looks good. My favorite part of the illustration is actually the springbok that has her shadow behind her that uh, kind of looks like uh, she herself is the springbok with the horns and ears. Um, kind of like those illustrations I spoke of. <laughs> so I really uh, liked that detail and um, I hope uh, you all enjoyed this illustration and enjoy her videos. She is fantastic. If you haven't seen her, go check her out.